Now, then we have movements in the demand curve. Now, at some point, prices may go up and prices may go down. And that is represented by the quantity demanded. But there is no change in the demand curve. There is no increase in the demand curve. There is no decrease in the demand curve. There is only a change in price. And so when there is a change in price, the quantity demanded also changes, as represented in the first graph, as I've already explained to you in the previous slide. P2, or I mean P1, is represented by a higher price with similar uh, quantity of demand. But when price decreases, there is an increase in demand. And when price increases furthermore, there is increase in quantity demanded, which means that there is no change in the, in, in the demand curve. The volume and willingness of the customers to purchase specific products remains the same, but when there is a change in price, it will affect the quantity demanded of a particular product. Uh, example for this is, you know, rice. Uh, I'll just not use rice because that is a basic commodity in the Philippines. We cannot actually um, you know, live without it. Let's just, let us just say cell phones. Now, if a phone is priced at a hundred thousand, there is of course lesser quality. I mean, lesser quantity of that particular home demanded by the buyers. But when that 100,000 uh, phone is reduced into 50,000, there will be a considerable number of people who would want to buy that particular phone. Furthermore, if that phone is reduced into 5,000 pesos per unit, of course, there will be a lot of people flocking into that particular store. Why? Because there is an increase in quantity demanded, though there is no increase in, uh, there is no change in the demand curve. Now, another form of change or movement in the demand curve is the movement of the demand curve, where there is a change in demand, wherein Demand curve shifts to the left or shifts to the right, but prices remains the same. Now, please notice that in the previous one, prices changes. In this second one, the prices remains the same, but the quantity demanded actually changes. Now, let's say, for example, P is, you know, the phone that we have, right? Now, the phone that we have is priced at 100,000 pesos, represented by P. Now, if the demand curve pushes back, meaning the, the demand curve pushes back, what are the causes of why demand curve pushes back? Probably, there is a natural disaster that people don't have money and so demand will decrease. You will only, you will only have Q2, or probably around 10,000 units sold in the Philippines. But if the price D, D right, at the price D, supposedly, you would uh, sell this 100,000 peso cell phone, you will be able to sell 20,000 20, units at demand B. However, however, in uh, December, there are a lot of people who earn quite a lot of money in December because it's uh, where bonuses actually come in. And there are uh, a lot of minons and minons who would want to purchase uh, gifts to their uh, loved ones and to their um, kinogos. No? So there is an increase in demand 
And so instead of the usual 20,000 units sold in a particular uh, condition, now it could sell around 30,000 units at the same price of 100,000 per unit. Which means that there is a movement, a change in demand when price is constant. Now, what are the factors affecting demand? Number one is substitute goods. What does it mean when we say substitute goods? What are substitute goods? These are things that are, that are alternative choices. Wherein, let's say, for example, uh, uh, kamote and uh, rice. When the price of rice actually goes so high, many people will just purchase kamote. And kamote, therefore, is a substitute good. Meaning that when the prices of, of uh, rice actually increase in a particular period of time, many will actually choose to eat kamote in that particular instance. This is actually uh, true during the time of crisis in 1998 and in 2008 and way back during the time of President Ferdinand Marcos. Then what we call as complementary goods. What are complementary goods? Cars and tires. Bread and butter. Meaning that when there is a decrease in the quantity of quantity demanded in bread, it would also affect the quantity demanded for butter or peanut butter or sandwich bread for that matter because these are complementary products. One cannot be sold over the other unless otherwise makilaw kang sandwich bread or mayonnaise, no? This is complementary goods. Next is income. Of course, if there is an increase in income, it would affect the, the change in, uh, it would affect demand. It would have uh, induced some change in demand. That is uh, represented in what I told you a while ago. Taste and preferences, of course. Uh, during the 1990s, it's uh, more of a cowboy style. And so the fashion that is um, in, that, in those particular time, or more or less on a, a um, cowboy hat with uh, maong jeans and maong jackets. Right? But this particular time is different. We are, we are at the time of the... the keep up uh, generation wherein people want to be uh, want to appear like Koreans and so the wearing skinny jeans and so on and so taste and preferences also uh, affects demand we have expectations let's say for example during the time when the pandemic was about to you know devour the world people are actually panic buying and you know purchasing a lot of stops in the market, and that also uh, induced change in demand. Meaning, when you expect something to go wrong, you will purchase a lot of uh, goods uh, ahead before you know the world will lock down during this pandemic. Then we have seasonal changes. Of course, uh, when when it's about to enter when, when we are about to enter the rainy season of course many will buy raincoats and umbrella probably you know? when we are about to enter the summer season there will be more demand on swimsuits and wash guards seasonal changes introduction of new products um, when Vito was introduced in the market there is change in demand in PLDT and Globe, right? And of course, uh, 
Dito was trying to you know, dominate within the market by offering very low subscription rate. The increase of number of buyers. When there, when there is an increase in the number of buyers, of course, it would increase demand. When there is a decrease in the number of buyers, there is also a decrease in demand. Then we have the theory of supply. Supply can be defined as the willingness and ability of the producer to produce products at a particular time in specific period of time. Supply also represents the relationship between price and quantity supplying. So, if demand is the ability to buy and the desire to buy specific specific product, now supply, on the other hand, is the willingness and ability of the producer to sell and produce this particular product. Now, the law of supply says that when that there is a direct relationship now remember in demand there is an inverse relationship here we there is a direct relationship meaning they are parallel to each other between supply and price now the increase in price will result in the increase in supply so when prices goes up supply goes up when prices go down supply will go down now, supply schedule shows various quantities of goods or service that producers are willing to, and able to produce at an available sale at each price within the range of prices. This is an example of a supply curve. As prices goes up, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, the quantity of supply also increases, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, if you notice, the supply curve is downward up, the, the demand curve is down, uh, up, down, meaning there will be a cross in this particular uh, curve, wherein supply and demand actually interact. And that will be discussed by the professors that will follow uh, mean. Right? Now, there is also a movement in the supply curve, right? When supply actually changes, right? of course, you know, change in technology, so on and so forth, there is also a change in uh, the ability of the industry to supply specific things. Now, when there is a change in supply, the supply curve actually shifts forward or shifts inward at the same price. Now, let's say, for example, this is a car at uh, $3,000 per unit. Now, due to change in, uh, change in uh, the, let's say, technology in manufacturing cars, there is an increase in the supply of these particular cars and so the demand i mean the supply shifts forward so at the same price of three thousand dollars the company or the suppliers can produce six units however when when technologies no longer work or probably there is a policy that this particular technology will be phased out and so suppliers will be left in a dark and they can no longer produce products. Well, at the same price of $3,000, they can still produce. But of course, the supply curve shifts to the left. And so therefore, they can only produce four units instead of six. And so that is how supply actually move along the, the uh, along the, the quadrant no? along the graph now there is also another form of movement in supply and that is called the change in in supply due to change in price now if you notice 
that uh, if there is a change in price from 80 to 116, there is also a considerable change in the quantity supplied by the supplier from 80, which the supplier are actually willing to produce and supply only 60 units to the increase of 116 there is also a corresponding increase of 10 units by the supplier and so that is how supply actually changes now what is the example for this particular uh, scenario now it's uh it's quite simple all right now let's say for example you are uh, manufacturing let's say cell phones right you are manufacturing cell phones and then you're willing to produce 60 units if your cell phones are sold at 80,000 pesos per unit you're willing to produce 60 units of the cell phones now because there is an increase in price there are a lot of see as uh, you know instances wherein price actually increases including the uh, during the interaction of supply and demand wherein there are higher demand and so you know it pushes the price up and so when there is an increase in price let's say 116 in this particular example there is a corresponding increase of my willingness to manufacture these cell phones and because it's now 116 per unit 116,000 pesos per unit I'll be manufacturing around 70 units meaning there is an increase in supply because there is an increase in price now what are the factors affecting supply first is the factor prices what are the factor prices by the way factor means raw materials right what are the raw material prices how much does the plastic work how much does the electronic works electronic components so on and so forth the state of technology what is the state of technology how much can you produce in a particular uh, instant or in a particular period of time the prices of related goods the prices of let's say for example of electricity the prices of uh, load for connectivity so on and so forth would affect also the demand of particular electronic goods let's say cell phone for that example no? expectation of future price changes no, we, we as a supplier, let's just say, for example, would uh, think in, in a future sense that probably in the near future, uh, there will be an increase in price in this particular uh, type of electronic device. And so we have to produce more in order to gain that specific targeted profit. Next is government policies. I've already told you that there are regulations by government agencies that restricts specific supply. Now, let's say, for example, you are a manufacturer of hollow blocks, and suddenly the LGU actually bans the uh, quarrying of uh, sand from rivers, and so you don't have a source anymore of uh, your raw materials. And so that government policy actually induces a decrease in your ability to supply weather conditions such as uh, typhoons and earthquakes and other natural calamities of course increase in the number of suppliers or producers increase or decrease in the number of suppliers or producers actually affect the volume of supply 